welcome to our uh, today's program a funny program about funny programs let us start the new year with the funny program about the book the greatest sitcoms of all time and enjoy a good laugh award winning author and pop culture historian martin gitlin is here he hosts this fun and entertaining presentation based on his book the greatest sitcoms of all time he is the only author to actually rank the best of the best including i love lucy all in the family the mary tyler moore show cheers seinfeld and modern family he will talk about funny snippets from those shows and others such as mash dandy griffith show and modern family challenge patrons with sitcom trivia discuss the criteria he used to rank the best of the best and talk about how sitcoms have evolved over the decades in humor presentation and content this program is really entertaining so join in on the fun it's all yours now martin go ahead Thank you very much. And I want to thank everyone for joining me tonight. I've been told by a lot of people, they say, boy, in this time in our history, we sure need a good laugh. So I hope to provide that for you here. Uh, I hope to provide a good laugh. Now, this is my book. It's called The Greatest Sitcoms of All Time. And people come up to me when they hear about this book or they see it and they say, oh, Marty, these are your favorite sitcoms, huh? And I have to tell them, no, not necessarily. Um, I use different criteria to rank the greatest sitcoms of all time. I try to be very objective and not make it like my favorites. It's not a list of my favorite sitcoms. It's the uh, list of the greatest sitcoms based on that criteria. Like, you know, like legacy, how long these sitcoms have remained in the American consciousness, how, or world consciousness even, how much impact they made on pop culture in the United States and around the world. Um, awards, Emmy awards, or they win a lot of awards, you know, how well respected the sitcoms were, a little bit was subjective, you know, how, how humorous I thought the sitcoms were, and um, how, you know, how many years they lasted on the air, all those kind of things went into uh, the criteria that I used to rank the greatest sitcoms of all time. Now, I must admit, when I was a kid, and I'm old, I'm getting old, I'm 64 years old, and when I was a kid in the 1960s, um, there was only, we only had, you know, three channels on our, on our TV set. And, um, uh, but anyway, I was out playing all the time. I was outside playing like kids used to do. They don't really much anymore. So I didn't really watch a lot of sitcoms when I was a little boy, but I did um, in the early seventies when CBS had that, the greatest lineup of sitcoms ever. And it's not even close really. Uh, All in the Family and, and MASH and the Mary Tyler Moore show and the Bob Newhart show. And then they had the Carol Burnett show. And later on, they had the Jeffersons and all these unbelievable shows. And people were staying home to watch TV instead of going to movies and stuff. Um, I watched a lot of sitcoms then. I started watching. And then in the 70s, I watched a lot of the shows that were on in the 50s and 60s, you know, in syndication. Uh, the Andy Griffith show and a lot of my favorites that I have still have today. I used to watch in the 70s in syndication. And, and then I started hooking up, you know, with the modern shows at that time, uh, Taxi in the 70s and Cheers and, and, uh, the, and Family Ties in the 80s and Seinfeld and, you know, all these wonderful shows that were out uh, all the way, you know, all through the years. So that's how I, um, and, and so when I became an author, uh, I was a sports writer for many, many years. I was a sports writer at a newspaper and I won of more than 45 awards, just to brag just a little bit. It's the only time I'm gonna to brag tonight. I won about 45 awards and, and won first place for general excellence and, and um, was voted one of the top four feature writers in Ohio as a, as a writer, as a newspaper writer. And then I quit the business because the newspaper business was going downhill and I started writing books. Well, I loved ranking things. And I loved, I, I wrote a book, I ranked the greatest cartoon characters of all time. I ranked the greatest American athletes of all time in, a, in another book. Uh, and I wrote this one where I ranked the greatest sitcoms of all time. And uh, so there you go. I wanna start the program here. And what I'm gonna do to start is I'm going to play the voices 
of sitcom characters. And in chat, all the answers in all my trivia, these voices, and then this trivia questions later on, just put the answers in chat. And then she will tell me who you guys are guessing. And I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. Now these sitcom voices I'm gonna play are chronological. So the first one is gonna be from the 50s and you're gonna be moving right along um, chronologically. And uh, let's see how you do. Here is the sitcom voice number one and see if you can guess who it is. And hold on, sorry. Sometimes this thing moves on me and I have to move back. Okay, here we go. Let's try that again. All right. Maybe if I get the initial shock over with, I can act pleased when I open it in front of Fred. <laughs> There's your hint at the end. That name at the she just said at the end is a hint. Who was that? Just put your answers in chat. Okay, do you want me to give you all those answers? Um, yeah, who are, we, who are we guessing so far? Okay, Jason gets Lucy as, oh, oh my God, people are 20 answers. One minute, one minute. So Mary guessed Lucy, well, Alicia guessed Ethel. Let's tell you, if you have that many answers, I want to tell you the answer and you tell me if anybody guessed it, okay? Okay. Did anybody, did anybody guess Ethel Mertz? Yes, Barbara, uh, Roger. Okay. Uh, okay, then uh, one for one. Alicia. Okay, that's okay. You just uh, Debra. Just tell oh me. Just tell me if they, just tell me if if anybody got the answer right, and then we'll move along because it'll mm -hmm. it'll take mm -hmm. too long if you tell me everyone. But congratulations, everybody. <laughs> okay. You did get, get the right answer. Here's number two. This is a two-faced teenager. Here we go. Good yeah. morning, Mrs. Cleaver. That's a very pretty dress. I'll wait for some answers to come in and then I'll uh -huh. give you an answer. Uh -huh. and you tell me if anybody. It's coming said. up. Coming, coming. Everything. All the answers are coming. I switched off my video. I don't think you need my video audio only. I'm just doing that to help with you. Did anybody okay. guess Eddie mm -hmm. Haskell? Yes, everyone guessed Deborah. Chris, Kathy, Catherine, everybody, Good. Ruthen, everybody right, guessed Eddie Haskell. <laughs> Good job from the from Leave It to Beaver. Here's number three. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Catherine. What do you mean busting my chops here? Make them believe you're a regular person. <laughs> no wait over there, I'll call your name and number. Till then keep your mouth shut. Okay. You want them to guess it first, and then yeah. I you will give the answer. Yeah. Did okay. anyone guess that? Yeah, one, that one yet? Yes, yeah, some a lot of people guessed, okay, but you if you. Uh -huh. Did anybody guess Louis De Palma? Yes, a lot okay, of cool. Catherine, Barbara, Alicia. Yeah. Okay, here's number uh -huh. four. Uh -huh. Here you go. Wait, so boss, if they don't get along, then you should smooth things over. Make them be friends. There was a hint at the very end there. Yep, I'm waiting to hear answers from them. Do you want to play one more time? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I well, got two I'll, I'll couple of answers. Did anybody got a couple say, of answers. Did anybody say Phoebe? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Again, Roger, Alicia, Catherine. Wow, oh, you guys are, are so great. great. You guys are fabulous. You guys are fabulous. Here's the last one of the voices. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I've come to realize that there's a very good chance that I might someday snap and kill my brother. Okay, I got from Jason some answer. Catherine uh, guessed something. Okay. Uh, did anybody guess Charlie Harper? Yes, both of them guessed Charlie. Three good, people, Jason, good. Alicia, okay. Catherine again. Oh. Excellent. All right, here we go. Now I'm going to play theme songs, three theme songs from sitcoms, and you tell me what theme song, what the show, what the show is from this theme song. Ready? 
Here we go. Wow, so much fun now, Joe Martin. And so a lot of people have given the answers. But How you about can, the, uh -huh. the monsters? Anyone guess? Yeah, wow, people? monsters. Yes, I got it. Debra, monster, and then Debra. Okay. Here's number two. Uh huh, Debra had guessed it. Remember, right. this is chronological, so it's going to go in chronological order. Here's number two. Mm -hmm. Hello. Wow, so many people. What is the answer? Like uh, for Bob Newhart. Show. Anyone guessing Bob Newhart? Yes, Lynette. Okay. Bob Newhart, a Ritzman, and uh, yeah, Newhart, Alicia also uh, gave Bob Newhart, and uh, okay. yes, show Great Jason. Mm -hmm. Here's the last one. Let's see if you can make it a clean sweep, everybody. Clean sweep. <laughs> oh, I, okay. Barbara answered, then, okay. Mm -hmm. You got some Jason answers? Jason answered, what is it? All a right. couple of answers, I got it. How about Parks and Recreation? Yes, you are correct, Martin. Parks and Recreation okay. by you Barbara. Guys are, and, uh -huh. You guys are great, man. You mm -hmm. guys are great. You're eight for eight. You got them all right. You got <laughs> every one of them right. Good job. Now, I'm going to start to show some video clips here. Snippets of, part of a sitcom. Um, now, there was a famous, famous comedian who was in movies and everything. Part of the Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis. The famous Jerry Lewis once said that women are not funny. I like Jerry Lewis, but that was completely so wrong. Uh, it's unbelievably how stupid that was to say when he was in the same era as Lucille Ball in I Love Lucy and Gracie Allen, who was a, a comedic genius, really. And then all sorts of fe great female comedians to come, uh, most notably in the Mary Tyler Moore show with uh, uh, Mary and Rhoda and Phyllis and all the, and uh, Sue Ann Nivens and all these great female characters. And then, you know, on and on and on they went. So that couldn't be more wrong. And I love, and Lucille Ball really proved it, how funny uh, and, and with great, wonderful physical humor that she showed. This snippet that I'm gonna show right now is one of the most famous scenes in sitcom history. Uh, this is when I, when Lucy and Ethel are working in a candy factory and doing a very bad job. They keep getting pushed from one department to the next because they keep fouling up. And uh, they're put in an impossible situation here. And this is what happens when they got put into a, an impossible situation. department. Yes, ma'am. Now, the candy will pass by on this conveyor belt and continue into the next room where the girls will pack it. Now, your job is to take each piece of candy and wrap it in one of these papers and then put it back on the belt. You understand? Yes, sir. Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> Let her roll! <laughs> Let her roll! Well, wait here. Somebody's asleep at the switch. <laughs> what are you doing up here? I thought you were downstairs boxing chocolates. Oh, they kicked me out of there fast. Why? I kept pinching them to see what kind they were. <laughs> this is the fourth department I've been in. Oh, I didn't do so well either. No. All right, girls. Now, this is your last chance. If one piece of candy gets past you and into the packing room unwrapped, you're fired. Yes, ma'am. Let her roll! <laughs> well, this is easier. Yeah, we can handle it. 
Melissa, okay? That became a really famous, a famous uh, scene. In fact, Saturday Night Live, many years later, did did a takeoff on that scene, but they weren't. It wasn't candy. They were nuclear warheads going by. So that was what it was kind of like a you know a takeoff on that scene, and then the whole world blew up and whatever. But but it was um, it was really it's really a famous famous scene. Now another sitcom in the fifties was really remarkable because it only lasted one year. It was 39 episodes, one season, but it's one of the most legendary, famous sitcoms of all time. And that's The Honeymooners. And the reason it didn't last a lot longer was Jackie Gleason, who you see here, who was the lead character in The Honeymooners. By the way, uh, they created a, the, the, the very famous cartoon called The Flintstones was completely based on The Honeymooners. But anyway, um, Jackie Gleason did not want to continue doing this sitcom. So he left, you know, he just, the sitcom died after one year. But it's really, really, it was a wonderful, funny sitcom. Now, in that day, in the 1950s, there was a lot of humor that you that is not, you know, really socially correct anymore. There was a lot of humor about his weight. There was a lot of humor about his mother-in-law. You know, that's kind of old school humor. But no, you know, and it, it's really not it's not really popular anymore but in this particular uh, situation um jackie gleason was wonderful at it as ralph cramden as you'll see here as he has it out with his mother-in-law mother it isn't ralph's fault it isn't ralph's fault look alice just because you're married to a horse doesn't mean you have to live in a stable What is she doing here? Please, Ralph, she's my mother. What's that? Your lunchbox? <laughs> oh, you're starting right in, huh? Starting right in with the insults. No warming up in a bullpen or nothing, huh? Starting right in. I remember when you used to come over, you used to start slow with a couple of hello stupids and stuff like that. <laughs> now I don't even get that anymore, huh? Well, let me tell you something and get this into your head. This is my home. And when you come in here, treat me with respect and address me with a civil tongue. Oh, why don't you shut up? <laughs> Ralph, what's the matter with the two of you? Can't you ever get together without fighting? I didn't start this. Mammy Yoakum did. <laughs> Ralph, I don't care who started it, but it is stopping right now. Anyway, what's that bag? Oh, I told you about this. Remember last month they found a bag in the bus? Well, nobody claimed it, so now it's mine. Oh, well, what's in it? I don't know what's in it. Can't be anything of value, or they would have claimed it. Can't be of any value, or you wouldn't have found it. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you dirty <laughs> Okay, listen, I got something important to talk to you about, and I'd like to do it in private. 
Anything you can say to my daughter, you can say in front of me. What is it, Ralph? Well, look, Alice, I'm short a couple of bucks, and I gotta pay my dues at the lunch tonight. They're gonna throw me out if I don't. Don't you give them a cent, Alice. One of these days, you're gonna push me too far. The only thing that could push you is a bulldozer. <laughs> All right, get out! <laughs> yeah! I have to be going anyway. You were going anyway. Whether you were going anyway or any other way, I'm throwing you out anyway. There isn't room in this place for you and me. There isn't room in this place for you and anybody. Ow! <laughs> yeah, like I say, that's old school humor that uh, you don't really... That's so hilarious, Martin. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah, so you don't really much. see that much anymore. Now, here is your first trivia question of the night. You guys ready? Here is your first trivia question. What young actor who got his start in the sitcom The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis gained fame as a movie star in such films as Bonnie and Clyde, Splendor in the Grass, Shampoo, and Heaven Can Wait? What young actor who got his start in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis Gained fame as a movie star in Bonnie and Clyde, Splendor in the Grass, Shampoo, and Heaven Can Wait. Let's see if you guys can uh, put yes. some answers in chat. I and got the I got the answers, okay. but if you tell and I can, uh, All uh, right. I mean, I will. Uh, the answer is Warren Beatty. Wow, everybody got the correct answer. Well, you got the Roger, I, Catherine, I Deborah, right Barbara, Ruthen, everybody got correct answer. Right. I can tell right now this is a sharp group. Now, in the late 1950s and early 60s, there were a lot of good sitcoms. I think the two best ones and the most famous were The Dick Van Dyke Show. And The Dick Van Dyke Show won like Emmy after Emmy for best comedy series year after year because it was a very sophisticated show. It, was, uh, it wasn't real goofy humor. It wasn't really silly humor in a lot of ways, but it was a sophisticated humor that launched the career of Mary Tyler Moore, by the way. And um, another great show back then was called Leave It to Beaver. Now I love Leave It to Beaver. Leave It to Beaver is notable because it was the first sitcom to focus on the kids as opposed to the adults. You know, the kids, uh, Beaver and Wally, his brother, the, and all their friends, that was the focus of the show. The, the, the parents were, were, were you know, a, a somewhat of a focus too, but the real focus of the show was the kids. And that was the only sitcom ever that really did that. Now, another great sitcom, uh, my favorite from that era was called The Andy Griffith Show. And The Andy Griffith Show was the first sitcom to really mix um, humor with uh, um, a real heart, a real kind of like almost a tearful, uh, the relationship between um, Opie, the, the little boy played by Ronnie Howard, and Andy Griffith, uh, Andy Taylor, his father, played by Andy Griffith, was really a wonderful relationship, and there was a lot of heart to it. And the humor was based on Don Knotts' character, Barney Fife, who was a really uh, manic uh, character and very, very funny. And he won a lot of awards, Emmy Awards, too, um, for, best, um, uh, for best comedic actor. Um, I was showing, trying to show a snippet from Andy Griffith, which I really like, but I can't show it because for whatever reason it gets blocked. Um, and so I'm gonna show you another uh, 60s sitcom snippet from the, a show called The Addams Family. Now in the 1960s, sitcoms were all about escapism. You had the assassination of Kennedy, John F. Kennedy. You had the assassinations of Martin Luther King and, and Robert Kennedy. You had the Vietnam War going on. You had the civil rights movement and you had uh, riots in the, in the ghettos and, and, um, and, 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 and on college campuses, all these demonstrations, all these things were going on that made people, when they, want to watch, when they wanted to watch television, try to escape all, the, all the, the very difficult times that were going on in the United States. So the escapism was, is the humor was really far out. The, 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 um, 
the premises of the show were really far out. You had these, these macabre uh, families like on the, the Munsters and Adam's family. You had a, a witch on Bewitched. You had a genie on, on I Dream a Genie. You even had a mother that came back as a car in, in, in My Mother the Car. You had a Martian in My Favorite Martian. So these are the kind of, the kind of shows that were being produced in the 60s so they could, people could escape real life. Now, um, there were a couple of debates going on in the 60s and beyond about TV shows. One was, what was a better show, The Addams Family or The Munsters? Because they were out the same two years. And my opinion was The Addams Family was a better show than The Munsters. There was another one, what was the better show, Bewitched or I Dream of Genie? And in my opinion, a lot of people disagree. In my opinion, I think Bewitched was a better show. So there you go. Now I'm going to show you um, a snippet from, I'm going to show you a snippet from uh, the Adams family. And it's kind of a cute snippet. It's about a, a couple that move next door that want to get away from the Adams family. And, uh, but since Gomez Adams owns their house, they have to try to act nice to them and get out of their contract. Please, I can't go in there. <laughs> oh. Honey, our future's at stake. Now you've got to go along. Go along? And say nothing. Say nothing. Be pleasant. Pleasant. And smile. <laughs> so, no matter what happens, smile. <laughs> Thoughtful, dear. Throwing rice. That's not rice, old man. It's lizard's teeth. <laughs> lizard's teeth? In the Amazon, no wedding ceremony is complete without the traditional shower of lizard's teeth. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, Lovely. On to the bridge table. <laughs> Beautiful room. She agrees. How sweet of you to say so. <laughs> Is that monster? Uh, Amanda. What an unusual decoration. Do you like it? Oh, oh we, we love it. <laughs> Seems to uh, tell a story. You're the first one to really appreciate it. It's yours. Oh, no! We insist. Oh, I see you've noticed another little treasure. Isn't it cute, dear? Two heads. Cute. Well, you know what they always say. Two heads are better than one. Say no more. Take it. I wouldn't have that. Amanda. Thank you. You're welcome. I can see by your expression that you're fascinated by Pierre there. Well, we'll throw it in for good measure, too. But I, I don't... No buts. Of course not. After all. Pierre would only be lonely with the turtle gone. You're so kind. Kind. Generous. Generous. Smile. Smile. <laughs> Don't misunderstand, Mr. Adams. We, we like our house very much. And why do you want to move out? The rent too high? Oh, no, no. Be glad to lower it. What would you like to pay? Well, it, it's not that at all. It's just that it's too far away from the supermarkets. Oh, goodness, you don't need any supermarkets. I know a lot of little specialty shops. Do you folks like fricassee of toad? <laughs> Amanda. Love it. Good. I'll make you up a batch. <laughs> Well, what a wonderful idea. Five-handed bridge. Dear thing. Loves to kibitz. Thing. Say hello to the Petersons. Nice to meet you. Do you mind if I smoke? No. Go right ahead. Now, 
after two years of the Adams family and the Munsters, all the sight gags got old. You know, how many times could you watch Thing come out of that little box? And how many times could you see people coming and the bear growling on the on the the bear rug growling and all these kind of things? The sight gags got old, and so the Adams family and the Munsters got uh, taken off the air after two years. But they were very they were still very memorable shows. And one little tidbit of information: that hand, the thing, the thing that you saw, the hand, that was the hand of Ted Cassidy. Ted Cassidy was the actor that played uh, Lurch, the huge butler. And they wanted to have a big hand come out of there. So it'd be really, you know, kind of uh, noticeable. So they used Ted Cassidy's hand to be, to be thing. Ted Cassidy was a, was a, a pretty good actor. He actually was act, acted in um, the beginning of a movie called Butch Cassidy, the Sundance Kid, as the guy that, uh, that had a, a fight, a battle with Paul Newman's character, um, Butch Cassidy character in Butch Cassidy, the Sundance Kid. That was Ted Cassidy. But anyway, we move on. Now, I want to give you your second trivia question before we, before we go forward here. And here it is. What actress, what actress played the lead role in the late 1960s sitcom called That Girl? Okay, I'm waiting to see the answers. What actress played the lead character in That Girl? Okay. I have, okay, Gretchen, okay, one minute. Gretchen will go, raised her hand, but she didn't write anything, Gretchen. Let me, okay. Okay, she, I, can I allow her to talk maybe? Okay, I, I you can talk, uh, Gretchen. Marlo Thomas. That's right, that's right. Marlo, you guys are two for two. And I'll tell you a little bit, of, I'll tell, give you a little bit of a, a hint here. It's very, very rare, very rare, and I've done this program many times already, very rare when a group gets all five trivia questions right. So you're two for two already. I'm proud of you. That's a good start. Let's see if you can What's get my prize? Right when we get there. Now, everything changed. Everything changed in terms of sitcoms on January 12th, 1971. And that was the day, that was the night that All in the Family debuted on CBS. And they actually gave a warning before the show started that said, you know, what you're gonna see here might be a little bit shocking to you, but we do it, we try to do it in good taste and you know, whatever, but they did give a warning to people that said, this is gonna be a little bit shocking. And it was. Everything about sitcoms in the 1960s was there was nothing political, nothing social, They'd stayed away from any, any kind of controversial issue like the war in Vietnam or, or the um, uh, women's liberation or gay liberation or bigotry or anything. All in the family did a complete 180. It, 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 it attacked all those issues head on, the Vietnam War and, and bigotry and, and social and everything, everything that was taboo, all in the family tackled. They, the first burp was on All in the Family. The first toilet flush was on All in the Family. And they talked about and made fun and, um, and they made humor of everything. And it, it completely revolutionized television. It, it absolutely changed television forever. All in the Family, I have All in the Family ranked number two behind Seinfeld as the greatest sitcom of all time. And, um, but the, the, the wonderful thing about All in the Family was not just that they tackled all these issues, it was hilarious. And in this particular snippet that I'm gonna show you, Archie Bunker, who you see here, the lead character. And this is, I, I chose this because I just think it's a really funny snippet. Archie Bunker buys a watch from a guy down at the plant on the, who works at the docks. And he is so proud of this watch and he he's bragging that it's an all no it's an all around the world watch and he could tell that when he when he looked at the watch he could tell that 800 million chinese people were sitting down to breakfast right then because he knew exactly what time it was in china so i, I tell you that because it's going to be a hint for what happens next but anyway when the watch breaks he's afraid that the watch is stolen the watch was stolen and he's going to be caught 
um, dealing in stolen goods. So when his wife, Edith, takes the watch to be fixed at the jewelry store, he's afraid that the jeweler is going to look at the, at the serial number of the watch and find out that it's stolen and he's going to get arrested. So he panics. So this is what happened after Archie Bunker panics about the watch being at the jewelry store. This is just a real manic scene. I love this scene because it's very manic and high paced. Eat it, why did, eat, eat it, where the hell are you? In the kitchen. Where was you two? Upstairs. Why didn't you answer when I called it? We didn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you've done to me. Why did you take that watch into Abrams? Well, I could have taken it to Nelson's, but Mrs. Abrams and I had gotten to be such good friends. That ain't the point, E. Abrams had to watch all day. He could have opened it up and seen the serial number there and called a cop. They could be on their way over here right now. Oh, no, I don't. Think so? I don't think he's even looked at the watch yet. Why not? Because I just took it in ten minutes ago. <laughs> ten minutes ago? Yes. Oh, Edith, I love you. Oh, Archie. get away from me! Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Where'd you come from? Uh, the stork brought me. I don't know. <laughs> get your coat on. What for? Get your coat on. What for? Get your coat on. Get your coat on. Get your coat on. Get your coat on. I want you to go down to Abrams Jewelry. Your mother-in-law took that watch in by mistake. I want you to get it back before he sees the serial number. Why, you afraid it's stolen? No, I ain't afraid it's stolen. <laughs> it happens to be a beautiful watch. I don't want no neighborhood amateur messing around, see? So hurry up down and get all it, right, huh? Will all you right. move? I'm going. Can you move faster you than that? Will you? Can you get going? I'm going. What if he already checked the number? Will you? Get back in here. What? Get back in here. Get back in here. Get back in here. Come on. Get back. Shut up! <laughs> I'm gonna call Abrams. I'm gonna get him on the phone. It's gonna be faster. Gloria, look at Mr. Abrams' telephone number. The number's on the ticket. Get the ticket. Where's the phone book? Get it a phone book. Call information. Call information. <laughs> Give me the ticket. I'm getting information. She's got the ticket. I got information. We don't need information. Well, Abrams, give me the phone. Please. Give me Daddy, the telephone. Give me the phone. We got the oh, ticket. Give me the phone. Information. We don't need you. We got the ticket. Get off the line. I got to use it. Give me the ticket. Get out of here. <laughs> Read that ticket to me. Our Abrams Jewelers open 9 to 6. <laughs> Read the telephone number on the ticket. What's the difference? It's closed anyway. Huh? It's after 6. It ain't after 6. It is after 6. It is after 6. It, it, it is after 6. <laughs> oh, jeez. Don't you realize what that means? <laughs> means the Chinese are eating breakfast again. <laughs> Sorry, went. Eat it, why did eat, eat it? Where the hell are you? In the kitchen. Where was you two? Oops. There we go. Sorry about that. Sometimes that happens when I don't click it flat fast enough. Now, the result of the breakthrough show, All in the Family, was that other networks scrambled to produce more relevant sitcoms and dump the escapist sitcoms that had been so popular over the years. Some of the sitcoms that got dumped, that got canceled because of All in the Family were the, were the rural sitcoms of the 1960s, like um, the Andy Griffith Show and Beverly Hillbillies that was very popular, uh, Green Acres, uh, Gomer Pyle had already been canceled. All these shows that didn't have any relevance to them got canceled because All in the Family showed the way. All in the Family one was the number one ranked television show for five straight years after it came out. And so the producers of television shows and advertisers and everyone understood that television had taken a completely new direction or sitcoms have taken a completely new direction. But um, actually part of that new direction occurred the year before All the Family came out when there was a show that came out called The Mary Tyler Moore Show. The Mary Tyler Moore Show was also a breakthrough because it featured a woman 
that didn't have to be tied in any way to a husband or a boyfriend to be fulfilled. Um, and it was, a, it was a show that really made an influence on the women's movement of that era. Um, and it was also a very, very, very funny program. And this particular snippet, which I absolutely love, I adore this snippet. Mary Richards, played by Mary Tyler Moore, who was, of course, the, the wife in the Dick Van Dyke show. Mary Richards creates, she works in a newsroom, WJM News, and she creates a new format for her news program, for the news program. And it features, of course, the, the anchor man named Ted Baxter, played by Ted Knight, who was absolutely hilarious. What a hilarious character he was. And he was an egotistical maniac. So anyway, um, you'll see what happens from there when um, the producer, the, um, the owner of the station kind of insults Ted and he takes it to heart and he ruins the debut of this new format. Big night. Yes. Looks good. Right. Good luck. Thanks. Ted, takes a big man to do what you're doing. Well, I always... Just exactly what is it you're referring to that it takes a big man to do? Well, I've been watching rehearsals all week, and I think it's great the way you've been letting Gordy kid around with you. I realize that being a straight man is a thankless job, and I thank you for it. <laughs> straight man? Ted, did I tell you how great you look in your new jacket? That won't work anymore, Mary. <laughs> Thanks. Ted, I'm sure that Mr. Stone... And As I was just saying to Ted... Ted, I'm sure what he meant by straight man... I think man. you're going to be the hottest thing to happen to news in this town. Good luck. Thank you. We'll see about that. Ted, please, no. Ten seconds. Ted. Get out of my way, Mayor. I've got personality, too. Ted, you don't. <laughs> Think you're pretty good, eh, Gardo? Well, we'll see who's the funny guy around here. We're on the air, Ted. <laughs> Well, we're off to a great start. Look, you got two glasses? Oh, I got one glass, Murray, but don't worry. I don't think I'll be using a glass tonight. Today in Washington, the president, while addressing a convention of Polish-American businessmen, announced his long-awaited economic reform policy. Say, that reminds me, I heard a great new Polish joke today. <laughs> you see, this Polish guy came home to his Polish wife. <laughs> A massive freeway tie-up occurred when a man, dressed in a bunny suit, on his way home from an all-night costume party, got out of his car to change a tire. <laughs> hey, I wonder if a cop came along and made him hop a straight line. <laughs> I don't think that's funny. <laughs> Another development in Washington today, the president signed into law... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a president story, that's mine. I think I'm supposed to do that, Gertie. What's the difference, Ted? I've already started it. But then it's a president's story. I was here first, and I always get the president's story. <laughs> Gertie and I often kid around like that. <laughs> what is this, Lou? Bourbon or scotch? Scotch. what Mary wanted. Probably wanted to see how we liked her new format. And that's our look at the newest resident of the Como Park Zoo. I've been handed this bulletin. The management of WJM TV extends its sincere apologies to Polish Americans in the hopes they will overlook a remark made earlier in this newscast. <laughs> what remark? <laughs> We'll be back with further apologies following this brief commercial. <laughs> sure, this is scotch, Lou. Tastes like bourbon. It is. We ran out of scotch ten minutes ago. <laughs> and now speaking for the management of WJMTV, Mary Richards. And I'm sure after you see her, you'll understand why I say Mary. I don't know what it is you're for or against, but whatever it is, I'm with you. Thank you, Gordy. We'd like to speak out tonight for population control.
Between the years 1932 and 1978, the population of the world will have doubled. That should do something for our ratings, eh, Mayor? <laughs> population experts agree that if growth continues at this rate, world population will reach 7 billion by the year 2000. Hey, I think I'm going to the diaper business. <laughs> which points to a disaster of... Global importance. Oh, come on, man. Don't be such a gloomy Gus. <laughs> the management of WJM feels that television can play a critical role in the control of population growth. For sure it can. As long as they're watching the old tube, they can't make the population grow. <laughs> television has a responsibility. Get it, man? Will you shut up, Ted? <laughs> Sorry, did I just hear right? Did I just hear Mary tell Ted to shut up on the air? Yeah. Good. Now, that is some of the most brilliant comedic acting I have ever seen, not just from Ted Knight, but of course by Mary, Richard, by Mary Tyler Moore. The way she is slowly disintegrating emotionally under the weight of Ted Baxter's, um, you know, s remarks is just brilliant. You could even see it in the slightest movements that she shows in her hands and her arms and she starts shaking and she's like falling apart. It's absolutely brilliant. It's absolutely wonderful. And I think that uh, Mary Tyler Moore, you know, was one of the, was one of the greatest uh, television shows of all time. In fact, I have it ranked number five among the greatest sitcoms ever made. Now, CBS was sitting with gold when they had All in the Family and Mary Tyler Moore. And that's when they created in the early 70s that lineup, that unbelievable lineup with Mary Tyler Moore and, and MASH. MASH, I think, it, which I have ranked number three of the greatest sitcoms of all time, was a, a brilliant show as well. In fact, I think MASH, it was like the first dramedy. It was, a, it was, it was, it was um, the first sitcom that was filmed like a movie as opposed to a television show. And it was also the first sitcom that really, really mixed a lot of um, tragedy um, with the comedy and a lot of serious issues with the comedy like um, you know, that, that MASH did. And so with MASH and Mary Tyler Moore and All in the Family and the Bob Newhart Show, which was very highly rated, um, you know, it was just sitting on gold. In fact, theater owners, movie theater owners in the early 70s were complaining that nobody was going to see movies. No one was going out to the movie theaters in the, um, in the early 1970s because everyone was staying home to watch TV. And that's when they started producing all these blockbuster films to get people out to the movies, like, you know, like Jaws and The Exorcist and all these, these uh, big blockbuster uh, movies came out during that time because they were trying to get people back at the movie theater. But anyway, here is your third trivia question. This one's a little bit tough. Let's see how you do. What television icon produced, created, produced both Gilligan's Island and the Brady Bunch? Okay, I'm just seeing the chat. I didn't see it. Okay, one new message, good. I'll give you a little bit of time for this one. This is a tough one. What TV icon produced both Gilligan's Island and the Brady Bunch. Do we have any answers yet? Uh, no, I did not. Yeah, there is. What is the thing? Can you tell me? There are a couple of uh, new ones. Sherwood Schwartz. No. Oh, yeah, one. Alicia Piggott. You got it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's all we need. We only need one correct answer. That's all we need. You guys are great, great. Yeah, and that was the you. toughest one. So good job. Well done. Okay. That's right. Sherwood Schwartz. And Gilligan's Island, uh, Sherwood Schwartz, the, those shows are really like in syndication, really famous shows. They're, they're two of the most um, watched television shows of all time. Gilligan's Island is still on in syndication and Brady Bunch too. And the thing is both shows, the critics, when both shows came out, hated the shows. They thought Gilligan's Island was the stupidest show ever made. It just got lambasted by the critics, but people liked them even though they were stupid. 
And Brady Bunch was sort of the same way. Um, people liked the shows, even though it wasn't a, a real realistic depiction of any kind of family, people liked it. So that's just the way it was. Now, I think that Mary Tyler Moore was one of the, had one of the greatest casts in television history. Great cast. But I think that a lot of people believe that Cheers, which was a probably, it was the biggest sitcom of the 80s, Cheers, and I have ranked number six in my all-time greatest uh, sitcoms, uh, what had, the, had maybe the best cast ever. In this particular uh, snippet, which I really like, uh, Norm and Cliff come out, they were playing pool, they come out from playing pool, and they find that these two people are sitting in their traditional chairs, and they don't like it because that's their, that's their chairs and uh, that's their seats. So they don't like it. So this is what happens when they find two uh, strangers sitting in their spot. Yeah. Let's try that again. Your connection yeah, was uh, bad. Sometimes uh, I think it should be okay. Let yeah. Me get, uh -huh. Let me uh, play it here. Oh, it's not on play. Just a minute. Here we go. All right. Now, I mean, you beat me fair and square. So, uh, all right, let me buy you a beer. <laughs> Excuse me, I was, uh, I was sitting, uh, sitting there. Oh, there was no one here when we came in. No, I mean yesterday. <laughs> and, and really, since the Ford administration. <laughs> we're just waiting for our table up in Melville. So you'll move? Look, there's lots of other stools. Um. <clears throat> Look, uh... Um, sounds good. I'm, uh, I'm Norm. I'm Jeffrey, and this is Hillary. It's nice to meet you. What do you do, Norm? I sit there. <laughs> well, it's nice meeting you. <clears throat> Look, uh, this is, this is... <clears throat> We're running out of time here. He's already two stages beyond anything I've seen before, so I, I think you better give him the stool. I'm, I'm sorry, we're sitting here. <laughs> uh, what's all the commotion about? Who cares? Set him up, Wood. <laughs> Very tricky, very tricky. Now. That's so, so hilarious, oh my gosh. <laughs> there have been a lot of great spin-offs in television history, sitcom history, mostly from the, starting from the 70s. All in the Family had great spin-offs like, uh, like the Jeffersons and Maude. Um, the Mary Tyler Moore Show had a lot of uh, uh, spin-offs, including Rhoda and Phyllis um, and but the, the greatest spinoff, the most successful, and I think the greatest spinoff of all time was produced by Cheers. And that was a show called Frasier. Frasier, you know, was a character on Cheers and Frasier won best comedy, the best comedy Emmy every year from 1994 to 1998. And it was really a wonderful uh, sitcom about these uh, snooty kind of wealthy people and um, how they kind of look down on the rest of society to some degree. But anyway, in this particular snippet, uh, Frazier has it out with his entire family because he's tired, he's lacking sleep, and he's very cranky. And you'll see what happens from here. Oh, for God's sake. I am trying to get some sleep. 
I asked you to keep that dog quiet, and instead you outfit him with a megaphone. In the last 36 hours, I haven't had so much as a nap, and I've got to be back at the station by 2 a.m. Eddie, listen carefully. By the time this day is up, one of us is going to sleep. Oh, don't worry, Dr. Crane. I'll take Eddie for a walk. And as far as your problem at work goes, if you want my opinion... Don't! <laughs> I've had my share of women's opinions for the week between the station's new Reich's Chancellor and Rosa's incessant whining. As far as I'm concerned, your entire sex can put a sock in it. Boy, you never let me get away with a comment like that. Even the best of us can get a bit cranky when we're overtired. All Dr. Cray needs right now is a little peace and quiet. Eddie! Damn it! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Morning, Daphne. Hello. Where are you off to? Oh, I'm taking Eddie for a walk. By yourself? Yes, of course. Why not? <laughs> it's dangerous out there. You never know when you might need... One of these. A starter's pistol? Oh, I don't think so, Dr. Cray, but thanks for the thought. How did she know it wasn't a real gun? Fooled the servants, even the ones who spent years fleeing hunters. You bought a starter's pistol? Yes. You see, as long as Maris thinks it's real, it makes her feel secure, but this way, no one can get hurt. Morning, Fraser. Just getting up? Just getting up? Are you out of your mind? A gun just went off in here. Uh, Niles bought a starter's pistol. Yes, and there's no need to get snippy. Accidents happen, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I snippy? I didn't realize it was too much to ask that there not be gunplay in my living room. You know, Niles, you shouldn't have any kind of gun, really. Come to think of it, now that Mr. Sunshine's home during the day, maybe I shouldn't either. <laughs> Mr. Lax, it won't be long before my loyal fans protest. And the afternoon slot is once again home to the compassionate and lovable Dr. Fraser Crane. Now get the hell out, Bobby. <laughs> All right, maybe I can catch up to Daphne in the park. I'll cover you. Oh, for God's sake. I am trying to get some sleep. I, I asked you to keep that dog quiet, and instead you outfit him with a... I got to hit that faster. I try to hit that as fast as I can. But anyway, now, here is your next trivia question. You ready? Okay. What actor played Joey Tribbiani in the wildly popular sitcom Friends? What actor played Joey Tribbiani in the wildly popular sitcom, Friends. Wow, I got three answers. Three people have answered. How about Matt LeBlanc? Four, four, yes, everybody got the right answer. Hey, good job. Okay, now, <laughs> I wanna tell you guys, you're four for four. That's pretty good. It's very rare, like I say, when anyone gets five, all a group gets five, five out of five correct. So you're on your way. Let's see if you can get the last one right, and uh, we'll go from there. Now, you might be wondering, what sitcom did I rank in my book as the greatest sitcom of all time? And this will give you a hint, it's Seinfeld. I had a hard time deciding between Seinfeld and All in the Family, which revolutionized television, and MASH, which was so brilliant, um, and even I Love Lucy, which was a brilliant show too, but I had to choose Seinfeld. There was nothing political about Seinfeld, nothing real, no social issues. It was just so incredibly funny that I had to rank it number one. In fact, the Television Writers of America actually um, did a poll of, of, their, of the writers in uh, uh, television writers, and they voted Seinfeld as the greatest written television show of all time, not just sitcoms, 
but the greatest written television show of all time, it ranked Seinfeld ahead of the Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone was number two. Seinfeld was number one. And All in the Family and MASH and Mary Tyler Moore, those shows were all way up there. But Seinfeld was the, was the greatest written sitcom of all time. And in the back of my book, I ranked the 50 greatest female and 50 greatest male sitcom characters of all time. And in the back of my book, I have Lucy Ricardo, I Love Lucy, ranked number one among the female characters. And I have this character that's featured here, number one, as the greatest male sitcom character. And that's George Costanza, who is just, and the funny, the, the weird thing about Seinfeld is that all the main characters on Seinfeld were negative characters. They were selfish, they were self-centered, they were you know, negative, they had a lot of negative traits, but it was the only show ever where all these characters had negative traits and people loved them anyway, because they were so funny. And George Costanza was the perfect example of that. You'll see here, he's at a party, uh, a, a kid's party that his girlfriend is, is, um, is hosting. And he has an argument with a lot of people, but he has an argument with a clown about not knowing who Bozo the Clown is. And he goes forward from there and you'll see what horrible things George Costanza does and says in this snippet. There is one question here, uh, Martin, and uh, yeah. Mary asked, where would you put Sanford and Son? Are you talking about Sanford and Son? Uh -huh. Oh, Sanford and Son. Uh, well, we'll uh, you, she can ask that after the program's over when we do questions and answers. Uh, okay, Sanford thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sanford and Son is in the book. We, I, I have them. I have Sanford and Son ranked in my top 70 sitcoms of all time. But I'm not sure exactly where, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a lot of time for questions and answers when the program is over. Here is the Seinfeld snippet that I want to Bozo? No. <laughs> B-O-Z-O. Sorry. Uh... You've never heard of Bozo the Clown? No. How could you not know who Bozo the Clown is? I don't know, I just don't. How can you call yourself a clown and not know who Bozo is? <laughs> hey, man. What are you hassling me for? This is just a gig. It's not my life. I don't know who Bozo is. What, is he a clown? What, is he a clown? What, are you kidding me? Well, what is he? Yes, he's a clown. All right, so what's the big deal? There's millions of clowns. <laughs> All right, just forget it. Forget me for you should forget it. You're living in the past, man. You hung up on some clown from the 60s, man. Oh, very good, very good. All right, go fold your little balloon animals, Eric. Eric. <laughs> What kind of name is that for a clown, huh? Excuse me, you must be George. Mm -hmm. I'm Robin's mother. Oh. oh, you seem like such a lovely young man. Well, I do what I can. My <laughs> mom has everything. Oh, this is just a wonderful party. <laughs> Burgers should be ready in a minute. Oh, great, great. Oh, What's that smell? Smell? <laughs> Smoke? Everybody, I think I smell some smoke back here. Fire! I was trying to lead the way. We needed a leader, someone to lead the way to safety. <laughs> but you yelled, get out of my way. Because, because, as the leader, if I die, then all hope is lost. <laughs> Who would leave? <laughs> the clowns? <laughs> Instead of castigating me, you should all be thanking me. What kind of a topsy-turvy world do we live in where, where heroes are cast as villains? Brave men as cowards. But I saw you push the women and children out of the way in a mad panic. I saw you knock them down. And when you ran out, you left everyone behind. Seemingly. <laughs> Seemingly. To the untrained eye, I can fully understand how you got that impression. What looked like pushing, what looked like knocking down, was a safety precaution. In a fire, you stay close to the ground, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> and when I ran out that door, I was not leaving anyone behind. Oh! Quite the contrary. I risked my life.
making sure that exit was clear. <laughs> Any other questions? How do you live with yourself? It's not easy. <laughs> so, she doesn't want to see me anymore. Did you knock her over too, or just the kid? No, her too. <laughs> and her mother. Really, her mother? Yeah. I may have stepped on her arm too. Right? You probably couldn't see because of the smoke. Yeah. But it was somebody's arm. Mm. <laughs> so you feel women and children first in this day and age is somewhat of an antiquated notion. To some degree. So basically, it's every man, woman, child, an invalid for themselves. In a manner of speaking. Yeah. Well, that's honest. Yeah. She should be commending me for treating everyone like equals. Well, perhaps when she's released from the burn center, she'll see things differently. Perhaps. So what was the fire? Just a couple of greasy hamburgers? Yeah. Eric, the clown, put it out with his big shoe. <laughs> now, very understated. I mean, that is just such an understated conversation between Jerry and George there. And I know it's a little bit um, socially incorrect to talk about some of the things they did, but that was what that show was about. It was a hilarious show that people actually embraced and they embraced the characters, even though they were negative characters. And that's what made it unique. And that's what made the writing so clever um, and so wonderful. Now, here's the last trivia question. Let's see if you can make it five out of five, okay? What HBO sitcom created by Seinfeld creator Larry David is still going strong after 20 years? What HBO sitcom created by Larry David, who created Seinfeld, is still going strong after 20 years. Larry David actually stars in this sitcom too. Barb, you can talk and she raised her hand, so I just unmuted her. And Barb, do you have any, I mean, do you, can you tell the answer? I, hello? Anybody? Uh, there are two, uh, three new messages. Let me go ahead and uh, what is the answer, uh, Martin? And uh, you get the, I can read it out. I'm sorry? Curb your enthusiasm. Yes, everybody got the right answer. Hey, let's have a parade. Mm -hmm. Five for five. Good job, guys. <laughs> that number, the third, the third one was Sherwood Schwartz is the toughest one. Once you got that, I had a good feeling that you could be able to get all five of them right. Good job. That's really wonderful. Now, yeah. mm -hmm. I got one more sitcom to show you. We already had the, we had the Adams family, right? We had all mm -hmm. the family, right? And now we're going to show Modern Family, which is probably as popular and maybe more popular than any other sitcom and, and well-made sitcom um, of the current generation. And here, as you'll see, this is kind of a more of a depiction of modern family life with a lot going on. And, and, and um, um, But anyway, in this particular sitcom, the mother is trying to give the daughter enough rope to live her own like, life as she chooses without any discipline. And um, she gives her freedom of choice by she allows her to go off um, with some married old, you know, like middle-aged married, you know, guy, uh, middle-aged guy who takes things way too far and he's way too old for her. She's, he's kind of a scummy guy, but her mother lets her go off with this guy because he's, he, she's trying to show him, show her that she has faith in her. And the father in the meantime is completely against it. And, but he's gritting his teeth and trying to let her do her own thing. And you'll see what happens from there. And I am going to actually put this on present and make sure I have it on present so it doesn't go to something else. And here we go. <laughs> hey, oh, right. 
Um, <clears throat> hey guys, so Kenny and I were thinking about going to this restaurant. Oh, sure. I don't have a problem with that, do you, Phil? No. In fact, it has been such a pleasure getting to know Kenny. It's our treat. Are you kidding? No. <laughs> Give me your credit card, Phil. Also, uh, this restaurant is pretty far away, so we might be out late. Well, sweetheart, you are only young once. <laughs> well, might even make sense to just stay in a hotel. Okay, put it on the plastic. Great. <laughs> okay, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Ugh, it's my ex-wife. Not the good one. What do you want? Nice game of chicken, Claire. She's gone. She is coming back. I am almost positive. Almost? Mm -hmm. Why do I listen to you? Why? You were wrong about the iPod being a failure. You were wrong about tomato being a vegetable. I don't even want to talk about your favorite planet, Pluto. And unless she was lying to the good ladies of The View, it's to me, not Demi. You're going to let me go with him? Isn't that what you wanted, honey? What's the matter with you? You've been acting so weird ever since I left college. For the record, you didn't leave college. You were asked to leave. Oh, would you guys never let me forget, especially Dad. Honey, your father. Oh, you don't have to tell me what he thinks, okay? I'm a huge disappointment to him. I see it on his face every day. He acts as if he doesn't even want me around. Give me the ticket for the car. Phil? No, I'm going after her. This little chicken game may work for your dad, but it doesn't work for me. That's my little girl. I need her to know that no guy on earth is good enough for her, let alone some slimy middle-aged jean salesman. What's this? Just enjoy it. Okay, now, it is your turn, everybody. You can unmute yourselves, or you can um, put your comments. I have, to, I have to un unmute everyone if you want to talk to them. One on. minute. Okay, one minute. I will unmute. Okay. Every, I will ask okay, everyone we'll to unmute. And you can ask me anything you'd like about my book, about your favorite sitcoms, whether they're made in my book or about the program or about, uh, you can comment on anything. Uh, you can have me ask any questions about sitcoms. Whatever you wanna ask, I am here for you to answer them. Did you rank Dennis the Menace or Hazel? I didn't, they did not make my top 70. Now don't forget, we're talking about 70 years 70 years of sitcoms from like 1950 to the present. So there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds to choose from, maybe even thousands. And so to, uh, if you're in the top 70, you are one of the greatest sitcoms of all time. And I didn't think Dennis the Menace or Hazel were worthy of being in the top 70. Here, one more question from uh, Kathy Catanzaro. What about Scrubs? I love that show. Oh, Scrubs was a good show. Yeah, Scrubs almost made it. We, um, um, that, was a, that was a good sitcom. I, I enjoyed that show. Uh, didn't quite make my top 70, but it was a, it was a, a really good show. And um, um, so no, Scrubs didn't make it either, but that was a, I, I liked that one a lot. Um, it was, in fact, what I did was I put out a hundred sitcoms and then I narrowed down, we only had room for 70 in the book, and I narrowed it down to 70. So I had to eliminate 30 of them. And Scrubs was one of the 30 that I eliminated. Okay, here are three more questions. Mary asked, where would, where would we put Big Bang Theory? Oh, Big Bang Theory is in our, my top 20. I like okay. the Big Bang Theory, great show. In fact, I used to show, a in, in this program, I used to show a snippet from Big Bang Theory, but I just don't have time anymore um, and I had to, I had to cut that one out because the program was running too long, but Big Bang Theory is a great, Sheldon, Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory is, was in, is in my top 10 greatest, um, sitcom characters of all time. He yeah. is hilarious. And I'll tell you what I like about Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. One of the reasons that I prefer older sitcoms, you know, like from the sixties and seventies. Uh, especially like in the 60s and 50s too. The, sh the, the premise of the show and the characters on the shows did not have to be realistic, okay? They didn't have to be characters that were had some kind of basis in realism. They could be completely crazy characters that were completely unrealistic characters. There was a show in the 60s called Green Acres that people either love or hate. 
it was a it was a really unique show, a, a surreal comedy, very um, real offbeat comedy. And all the characters in the show, like Mr. Haney and Hank Kimball and, and Arnold the Pig, you know, they were completely off the wall characters that didn't have to be realistic and funny. Now, in the modern day of cartoon and uh, modern day of sitcoms, the characters are generally realistic characters and they're funny within that realism. I don't like that necessarily. I like characters that can be that can be completely unrealistic. And I feel like Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory was an exception. He is a character that's completely unrealistic um, and hilarious because of it. And I like that. That's what, just just a comment. I, I know I'm I'm going off on a tangent here, but that's one of the reasons I like Big Bang Theory. And I love Sheldon from Big Bang Theory because he was so wacky and so um, unrealistically funny. Okay, there are four more questions for you, uh, uh, Sir Martin. And uh, there is a, how about Barb is asking how about home improvement? Yes, home improvements in my book as well. Um, and um, I, I I like that show. That was a good that was a good solid comedy. That was a funny that was a funny show too. Um, I, I, I didn't watch, I don't think I watched all the episodes of Home Improvement, but I watched some of them and okay. I, I watched a lot of them actually. And I thought that was a pretty, uh, a pretty good show. I did. And, 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 um, Home Improvement made, made the book. Yeah. Gretchen is asking, how did you get interested in sitcoms? Well, I got interested in sitcoms when I was a kid, like in the early seventies, like I was talking about that unbelievable lineup of sitcoms on CBS with All in the Family and MASH and Mary Tyler Moore and Bob Newhart show. I watched them all religiously. And I like to laugh. I like humor, you know, I like to, I, I consider myself a kind of like a funny person, although I don't know my family thinks that way, but I consider, I like to, I like to joke around. I like to be, I like to laugh. And so sitcoms, like as far as television is concerned, the shows, the, the television that I watch are generally sitcoms, uh, some cartoons, and sports, you know, live sports. I don't watch a lot of um, drama shows, you know, police shows or detective shows or or lawyer shows, things like that. I watch I watch mostly sitcoms. And so uh, when I was a kid growing up, and then when in the seventies when I started watching a lot of sitcoms, and then beyond that, and then when I became a writer and became a, an author, and I got a, you know I had a publisher that was interested in these books. Um, I pitched the book because I figured it would be great to rank. Nobody ever ranked the greatest sitcoms of all time. Nobody ever did this in a book. So I decided it would, I would rank them, you know, based on all that criteria. And that's how it came about. Um, I just thought it was a really good idea. I, I had already, I ranked the greatest athletes of all time. I ranked the greatest um, cartoon characters of all time in another book. And um, I ranked the greatest sitcoms of all time as well. Okay, here is another question for you, Martin. And Jason is asking, is there a sitcom in the last 10 to 15 years that has redefined the genre in your opinion? Well, I think The Office, you know, because the, the way the, the cutaways, the, the unique cutaways that they do when they kind of, um, uh, you know, kind of interview these, these, these sitcom characters, during the course of the show to you know get their thoughts and stuff and then and then you know what followed the park and parks and recreation those kind of shows I think I think the office you know sort of um, took sitcoms into a new direction there's a sitcom on right now that's current that's only been out for a few years called Shit's Creek that I think is really really uh, hilarious um, and I do like that the characters are really offbeat um, in Shit's Creek. So yeah, I mean, um, I think the if, to answer your question, I think the office was one show that really kind of took things into a new direction. Okay, that's the next question. There's a Mary, I think you have answered. The office was perfect for its time and a lot of people could relate to it. Yeah, that's I mean, Mary. I, <laughs> yeah, and like I say, um, my preference is characters and, and the uh, premise of these shows to be um, unrealistic or off the wall. Um, and I don't, and that's why I'm not a big fan of the office or parks and recreation. I'm a little bit more, I do like Schitt's Creek a lot. Um, and I liked, you know, uh, some 
some modern uh, I liked um, uh, Two and a Half Men, which was a more recent sitcom, even though, it, you know, it was a little bit racier. But I, uh, but I, I, I like that show a lot. I watch that all the time. But mostly I like shows that have, a, you know, like I say, are a little bit more um, absurd and a little bit more off the wall, a little bit less realistic in terms of premise and characterization. What about Beverly Hillbillies? Oh yeah, I mean, I liked Beverly Hillbillies quite a bit. Um, my favorite show from that genre though, from that whole run of shows that they did, which was Beverly Hillbillies, Green Acres, well, Beverly Hillbillies, Petticoat Junction, then Green Acres. By far, I liked Green Acres the best. In fact, I didn't like Petticoat Junction at all. I thought it was very, uh, what's the word, milk toast. It didn't have an, it, it, Green Acres had a real edge to it. It had a real absurdity to it. Uh, Petticoat Junction, um, you know, I, I, I must admit, I liked looking at the girls on Petticoat Junction <laughs> when I was younger, but, uh, but the, that was the, as far as it took me, um, I didn't, I thought it was a very plain show. Beverly Hillbillies was brilliant. In fact, the Beverly Hillbillies episode after John F. Kennedy was shot, that came out about 10 days after John F. Kennedy was killed, was the highest rated half hour television show of all time. Because once again, people were escaping. They wanted to, uh, for a half hour, get away from the tragedy that happened in Dallas. And so they watched that particular episode of Beverly Hillbillies and it's still the highest rated one ha uh, half hour television show ever. Did it make your ranking? Oh yeah, Beverly Hillbillies, oh absolutely. Okay, Alicia, there is another question. A bit of topic, but who is your greatest sports figure of all time? Who did, uh, well, who did I rank the greatest of all time? No, but who is your greatest sports figure of all right. time? Well, who did I, I ranked, um, what I did was I ranked them based on a different yes. uh, point system. And I ranked Jim Thorpe as the greatest athlete of all time. I, I based it on how dominant a sports figure was in the era in which they competed. So I have Michael Jordan, number two. I have Jim Thorpe, number one, because he was the most dominant sports athlete of his generation. Okay, very good. I think that's all for the uh, for today's questions, uh, oh, uh, Martin. One and thing. Uh, one last thing. Yes. Uh, Ask and, a question. Uh, I'll let everyone go. Um, I don't have the sitcom book for sale because the the publisher overpriced the heck out of it, and I can't. I don't sell it. I, I don't even have any copies of it left. But if you're interested in any of my books, um, the one book I think you might be interested in is a celebration of animation, the 100 greatest cartoon characters of all time, where I rank the greatest cartoon characters ever. And I have Bugs Bunny number one, and, and it's just a really fun, funny book. And if you're interested um, in that book, all you gotta do is go to Etsy.com, Etsy, my, I sell my books on Etsy, and you go to Gitlin Books, all one word, Gitlin Books, all one word, because there's another Gitlin selling books on that site. So you go to Etsy.com, Gitlin Books, all one word, and uh, the Celebration of Animation book. I've already done that program for this library, by the way, I do a program for that, um, is on that page. So there you go, Etsy.com, Gitlin Books, all one word, and you could uh, get a copy. I autograph the book for free, I personalize the book for free, and I ship the book for free. It's all free. Uh, autograph personalization for you or for anyone that likes the book as a gift and um, shipping for free as well. So there you go. And I do want to thank everyone for coming and thank you so much, everybody. Thank you very much. It was a hilarious program, Martin. Thank, thank you. you. We all thank had a great so laugh today. After good, this good. stressful, during this stressful time, we need this laugh and we really enjoyed your program. Thank you very much. My pleasure. My pleasure. You guys have a great night now. Thank you all for attending this program. Good night. And we and there are three more. Yeah. Just thank you for from everyone. They are we all enjoyed your program once again. Uh, thank you very much, Martin. Congratulations for getting all the trivia questions right, by the way. That was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, thank you all. You guys have a good, good night. night. Bye-bye. Good night. Stay safe.